Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com. I'm back with Watch and Learn. Is it safe to set your watch backwards? You wake up in the morning, you look at you look at the time, and you go, ah, I'll just back it up, you know, five hours, six hours, whatever. Short answer, spoiler alert, if you if you <laughs> don't want to watch the rest of the video, I I don't think it's a good idea. I don't I don't recommend it. If it's daylight savings time and you have to go back an hour, yeah, no problem. Uh, if you look at your watch and you know it's three minutes fast after a week, you say I'm just gonna back it up, you know, three minutes, no problem, have at it. But making a habit out of it and going through the hours, minutes, um, backwards, I do not recommend it. I say you only go forwards. Gonna be a little techie, a little nerdy, a little bit different when you get deep into a movement here. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. So without further ado, let's get on with it. Okay, so here we go. We have a, uh, this is a copy of a Unitas 6497, 6498 movement. Uh, it's a seagull movement. You can find them online for relatively inexpensive. Great to work on because they're nice and big. There's no automatic winding works. Uh, and you know, for hands like mine that aren't too steady, this is really what the doctor ordered. So we're looking at what we would call the movement side or the back side. You look through an exhibition case back and this is what you see. Uh, winding wheels here, you have a gear train here, balance, balance wheel here, uh, under here is mainspring, second wheel, third wheel, and fourth wheel. What's interesting, or you know, maybe not interesting, but because it's based on an older movement, it doesn't have center seconds, it has offset seconds, uh, so that's taken care of over here. When you get into center seconds, you start getting pinions going through pinions, through hollow shafts in the middle of the watch. It makes it far more complicated. This is simple. So let's start on the movement side, right? So if I wind this sucker up, it should start, there it goes, it's ticking away. So it gave a little bit of wind and there it goes. So what's important to note as we start our little exercise here is that everything, absolutely everything on this side of the movement operates in only one direction. If a gear spins clockwise on this, on this side, it always spins clockwise. If it spins counterclockwise, it always spins counterclockwise. Obviously a gear spinning clockwise uh, meshes with a one spinning counterclockwise, they're gonna go in opposite directions. But, but they never change direction. The trains always go one way. The flow of power is from the mainspring all the way down through to the balance and you have maybe a topic for another day. I know I've covered in the past. You have the escape wheel uh, attached to the fourth wheel which is powering the seconds hand, etc. So it's just important to note, right? Everything on this side never goes backwards. You want to get into back hacking, I've done videos on that as well, but for intents and purposes, everybody here always goes in one direction, which leads us to the dial side. So now we flipped it around, we're on what we call dial side. Let's assume the dial has been removed, well there was never a dial on it, but the dial has been removed and we have just one hand, whoops, there it goes right there, that is the, it's actually the minute hand. And if I go to change the time, you could see I can move, there we go, I can move that hand clockwise and that is telling the time. But something to note now, right? I'm turning this clockwise. What's happening on the other side? Well, let's turn it counterclockwise. Clockwise, counterclockwise. What is happening on the other side if, as I said, gears only spin in one direction, ready? Clockwise, counter, I'm actually moving the, I'm moving the crown with my thumb uh, and forefinger and absolutely nothing is happening. If you could zoom in really close on that middle gear, uh, the one in the middle of your screen, it is actually rotating. Uh, that's the second wheel, so it's rotating once per hour, uh, but it's rotating very, very slowly, no matter how much I turn the crown forwards or backwards. So obviously at some point somewhere, there is a decoupling that's happening. We are decoupling the movement, uh, excuse me, the dial side of the movement from the movement side of the movement or the gear side, whatever you want to call it. The, you know, I call them front side, back side, but I guess the technical terms are dial side and movement side. So something is decoupling those two. And what is that thing that's decoupling those two? Well, that little thing lives right here. That guy I am touching with my tweezers, that is the cannon pinion. So that piece right there with the little gear gearing at the bottom and it's meshing with this gear here, 
That is the Canon Pinion. The Canon Pinion is a friction fit device and it fits on the shaft of the second wheel, that wheel that's rotating once per hour. And you know, am I still in time? I am still in time setting mode. So this is the minute hand. And what's happening is as I am rotating the crown with my thumb and forefinger, I'm transmitting motion through, well, the keyless works. It goes, um, that's the winding pinion, not connected because the keyless works has decoupled it. Sliding clutch over to a um, intermediate wheel. And let's see if I can get that here. Uh, intermediate wheel, and then the train goes under the setting lever spring, and we wind up with this here, this gear here, turning and meshing with the cannon pinion. So the cannon pinion is literally just friction fit onto the second wheel. Now I will actually, I don't have a cannon pinion remover, I'm not a fancy guy, uh, but there is the staff or the pivot of the second wheel sticking through its jewel. And if I now go to change the time, it's obviously not connected to anything, um, but you can see that it meshes with the cannon pinion and it is mounted on that stub. We say, well, Mark, I only see so far, all I saw was a minute hand. You didn't show me an hour hand. So let's get into how that works real quick. Okay, so I'm gonna put the cannon pinion back on. I had to remove the minute hand that was on it that I was using, for example. But we have to, it's friction fit. And let's see, is it on? I don't think, I don't think I meshed the gear right. There we go. Now it's on. So there you go. So I spin, I go to change the time, and the cannon pinion moves. Now there is something called an hour wheel. Now let's see if I can, the angle is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch, watch the, <laughs> backwards, watch this gear right here. You know, obviously it's part of the bigger gear, but watch that little thing up top. Ready? Pop it on. And so now, spins much, much slower. Every turn of the, well, how much slower do you think it's turning? It's turning 1 12th slower, right? So now you will notice as I'm spinning it, look here and look down here. You'll see the minute hand, where the minute hand mounts on the second wheel or the, the um, cannon pinion is moving much faster than the hour wheel would move. Okay, so all of that basically just to talk, just to tell you about, um, I guess I could put hands on, but you don't need it. I think you kind of understand what's going on. Okay, so all that background, so let's talk about what the heck is actually happening. Now we're gonna get into the meat and potatoes of our discussion. We just needed uh, you know, a bit of background first. So the cannon pinion, as I mentioned, is friction fit to the second wheel. The friction is great enough such that uh, as time moves on, as that second wheel spins, it's taking the cannon pinion with it, and with that it rotates the minute hand, the hour hand, etc. right? So this rotates, it hits the hour wheel that we took off, uh, and everything is moving forward in a nice progression of time. So let's shelve that for a quick second. So when we're in normal time telling mode, okay, ready? The, the cannon pinion is turning, right? What's it bumping into? It's turning this gear. This gear and this gear are the same, it's, so it's turning that gear. That gear then hits this gear here, and this is what the hour hand is mounted to. My point here is that everything is always moving forwards. Time is always advancing forward. We're never moving these gears backwards. So reason number one why I say you should not make a habit out of setting your watch backwards is for the same reason I talked about the backside and all the gears are always moving in the same direction. These hands, the so-called, uh, these are what, the motion works? Uh, yeah, these are the motion works. Um, they're always hitting each other in the same spot. The gears are always hitting the same faces uh, and they've just fallen into a rhythm and they're happy. Why move them backwards so that the wear surfaces can change, the profile of the gear can change, etc. We're not dealing with, you know, big gears, car engines, anything. These are super duper tiny. Um, you can probably get the scale of it from just from what we're looking at, but I guess, you know, this is, I don't know, this is probably less than an inch across from here to here. Kind of insane. 
Uh, so that's reason number one. Reason number two, and perhaps reason that I, I don't think people talk about much, but I really think is maybe the more important reason. When I put this into time, one second, time changing mode, and I go forwards, what's happening here? Do you, do you get a sense for what's happening? The cannon pinion is rotating on top of the second wheel pivot, right? It's, is friction between them, but it's actually moving while for intents and purposes, the shaft that is rotating on is still, it's not moving. So we are forcing it to rotate about that, the staff that's sticking through the dial. I don't like that, but that's the way it has to be. It's a, you know, it's kind of a clutchy mechanism and it works on friction. However, why do this? Why turn it backwards? and forward, and backward, and forward. We're basically wearing the cannon pinion against that second wheel pivot unnecessarily. Now in not just one direction, now in two directions. So what's gonna happen? Well, imagine they're not perfectly smooth surfaces, right? So imagine on the inside, there's dirt, grit, whatever, dust, sand, and it's just gonna wear away at the metal. We're not dealing with super hard metals here. Um, I have a feeling the canyon pinion, I don't know if it's steel. I'm guessing it's brass more than likely. Uh, the pivot should be steel that's coming through. So you get two metals of different hardnesses rubbing on one another, and they just shouldn't be. And actually, uh, there are instances where watchmakers actually have to take the canyon pinion and crimp it a little bit to get a little more friction between the pinion and the second hand, and the second wheel because it's slipping. So that's my that's my main reason. I don't like this whole back and forth movement thing, rotating this about that second wheel. Remember, as I'm doing this, that thing that's sticking through the dial that you saw, as I'm going, right, I'm just gonna do it one more time. I know I'm beating a dead horse, but as I'm going like that, ready? Let's see, this is probably I'm probably loosening this already. There we go. This thing in the middle. This wheel here, this staff that's sticking through, it is not moving at all, obviously. When I go like this, I am just rotating the cannon pinion around it, and I think that is no good. That's it. This was kind of fun with the, with the movement close up. Uh, it's not really work for me. I will <laughs> leave that to the experts. This has been Mark from LongNightWatch.com telling you about why you may not wish to set your watch backwards. Please like. Ooh, there it is. <laughs> like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel. I don't know what the hell it's going to be. Guys, you should see how this is set up. There we go. <laughs> Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. Questions, comments, anything else, put it down below. We should address as soon as I can. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.